This coast must have seemed like outer space to the men of the 16th century. To Vancouver, to Portola, and Cabrillo. The arid desert, wooded mountains, hidden lakes, and valleys, much like the ones they had left behind in Spain. They touched the new land with a breath of human aspiration. They drew in the outlines of life for generations to come. From Monterey to Point Aguilo, from Los Angeles to San Diego. afternoon of September 28, 1542, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, distinguished Portuguese navigator in the service of Spain, commanding the flagship San Salvador, made his first Alta California landfall and thus discovered what is now the state of California. Philip Kirtland, commercial artist. Assignment, prepare illustrations for a brochure on the home of the Atlas, the region, the city, the place where it all began. great natural harbors of the world. One hundred and twenty miles south of Los Angeles, it is the smog-free center of commerce for southwestern California, Arizona, and northern Mexico. A center for advanced research in oceanography, medicine, electronics, astronomy, and nuclear physics. San Diego built the Lindbergh spirit of St. Louis and pioneered America's entry into the air age. of the world, I'd say San Diego has the most to offer. So much variety and an elusive spirit here, too.
dramatic, seems different than the other aerospace plants I've seen. It has an attraction you don't find in brochures that you can't put in brochures. A mixture of the functional and the ethereal. General Dynamics Astronautics, home of leading engineers and scientists at work on the nation's top missile and space projects. Getting the company management down for a sketch is just about impossible. You gotta catch them on the run here. What is life like in our business? Well, we work very hard at our everyday problems, and we're engaged in programs that are of great importance to our country. That is a tremendous... J.R. Dempsey, company president and manager of the Atlas program since he was 33 years old. So 20 years from now. It took persistence and discipline to design and build an ICBM capable of hurling a nuclear warhead from continent to continent in minutes, a vehicle also able to boost astronauts into orbit. But our job at astronautics is really only beginning. Carl J. Bossert, father of the Atlas, whose genius has revolutionized the art of rocketry. In the early days of Atlas, the fact that we had almost no experience in the missile field was very helpful to us. We didn't have any traditions to work around, and anybody who had a fresh idea was welcome. And that, by the way, is still true today at Astronautics. Our progress into space will occur along four phases. Exploration, utilization of space, colonization of other worlds, and exploitation. Craft A. Ericke, Director of Advanced Systems, now working on detailed studies of manned interplanetary missions to Venus and Mars and beyond. To utilize terrestrial space, by means of meteorological satellites, communication satellites, and similar devices. In the course of these two phases, we will have developed a space technology which will allow us to colonize other worlds. At first, these colonies will consist of small bases in the nature of outposts. But later on, these bases will contain a large number of people of both sexes. And people will be born, not only on Earth, but elsewhere in space. In the course of this colonization, we will have developed space transportation means so powerful that we can think of exploiting extraterrestrial raw materials. That is, making the entire solar system the raw material base of man, retaining the Earth as a biological center of a growing mankind. Now, which type of people are necessary to make such a program, such a development, come true? They have to be people of vision. They must possess skill and knowledge. And most important of all, they must possess the art of blending the possible with the impossible. Listening to these people, the people who are piecing together a mosaic of the future, that's, that's the only way to get the real feel of this place. Outer space is a hostile vacuum charged with lethal radiation and dusted with hard meteoroids. In our space environment simulator, we can subject an entire satellite to a vacuum of 5 times 10 to the minus 7th millimeters of mercury, equal to an altitude of about 150 miles. Cold walls and a solar source complete the simulation of space environment. We've been investigating solar, Van Allen, and man-made radiation since 1957. To establish shielding criteria for the protection of astronauts, nuclear physicists are using a linear accelerator capable of bombarding a specimen with 3 million volt atomic particles. This fragment, recovered from John Glenn's MA6 Atlas booster, indicates the need for adequate protection against meteoroids.
Skin structures of metal and plastic are subjected to high-velocity impact tests, duplicating the bullet-like effect of particles in space. How do you armor plate a manned capsule from the hazards of space, yet keep it light enough so it can get off the ground? Engineers are engaged in research and testing and supported a load of 6,800 pounds before failure. Physicians, psychologists, biologists, and engineers are working to define human capabilities under the conditions of space flight. Their objective, to arrive at engineering solutions to the problem of man-machine integration. Investigations of weightlessness have a direct influence on spacecraft design. The weightlessness of space affects the development of all flight equipment, like the miniaturized kit that the astronaut will use to check both his own physical condition and his ship's environment during space missions. Designed for compatibility with weightlessness, the kit is equipped for blood and waste sampling bacterial and particulate contaminant studies and other necessary tests. Scores of separate hardware and technique solutions, individually arrived at by project teams, must be brought together and tested under conditions duplicating as nearly as possible the conditions of actual flight. Full-scale simulations of a life-supporting environments undergo tests lasting from a few hours to several weeks. Here, Crewmen are observed and trained in the duties they must perform during the long voyages through outer space. What sort of charts and lighthouses will men need to navigate up there? tracking that is required to follow space missions and program the trajectories of supporting vehicles. The men and women who developed Azusa Mark I and II and are now building the GlowTrack Global Tracking Network are establishing the requirements for future tracking systems. Designers must consider the relationship between onboard data processing and communication with base computers, a team which created one of the industry's largest high-speed data processing centers is now attacking these and other major data problems. Looks like telemetry tapes will replace the old-time navigator's log books. And instead of spectacles, we may need computers to read them. I don't know which feeling is stronger watching the men work. Awe or curiosity or intrigue dynamic, yet elusive thing. astronauts must be able to plot their positions and guide their craft to rendezvous with supporting space stations, other space vehicles, and eventually to approach and land on the moon and planets. perception leads to practical design solutions in the creation of realistic flight trainers and television display equipment.
A three-ton balanced mass supported by friction-free air bearing duplicates the motion of a vehicle in space. Simulated rendezvous and docking operations expand our knowledge of control systems, autopilot, and cockpit visual displays. Problems of approach and control are tested under simulated flight conditions. These practical exercises are invaluable both for training crewmen and for guiding scientists and engineers in the refinement of basic technology. There are no guidebooks to show the way. Each scientist and engineer is an explorer, venturing into a world of problems never before faced by men. Even the simplest design problem down to the last rivet and hose coupling, calls for solutions beyond the known boundaries of today's state of the art. Diego, the challenge of the unknown has become a way of life. The culture and heredity of the area are always in evidence. For many of us, the thrill of discovery never grows old. of life can we contemplate? of recreational opportunities here is unlimited.
San Diego, many have caught a way of life that others have not yet contemplated. We today are merely the shipbuilders for the men and women who will enter the new era of discoveries and lay the foundations for those after them who will develop planetary technologies and create cosmic civilizations. Opportunity is here. Mm -hmm. 